Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com <laughs> and I just now redesigned the pattern for my Jackrabbit faux trophy mount sculpture. Now this pattern, or the original pattern I should say, was up on my website I think almost 10 years and it's been one of the most popular patterns I have. A ton of people have made it. Some of them even have turned them into a, a jackalope. <laughs> it's really fun. But I have always wanted to redesign it because there were a lot of pieces, they were quite small, so I wanted to design it in a way where it would be just a little bit easier to put together. And I also wanted to design it so that you could use it with cereal box cardboard instead of the cardstock that the original Jackrabbit was designed for. Because cereal box cardboard holds up a lot better to paper mache. So this month I actually went ahead and did him. And he's not exactly the same as the original Jackrabbit. I, I just started out with a new original clay model, like I always do with my patterns, and so obviously it was going to be a little bit different. But he looks very much like a Jackrabbit, I think. <laughs> I really like him. I've already made a couple of videos, which I'll put on this page right here, um, ultimatepapermache.com slash Jackrabbit. In those two videos that I put on that page already, you can see how the pattern pieces went together. And then after I got all the pieces taped together and the paper mache was on there, I started playing around, um, really playing around. This is not how you're supposed to do it. I just really like experimenting with things. And uh, gosh, it was about three months ago, I bought this set of uh, colored pencils. And I still, I, I had never had time to actually play around with them yet. There's been so much work to do in the garden and I just, I have just not had much time in the studio. So I decided that now was the time to go ahead and play with it. I'm going to show you <laughs> what I did. I'm going to give you a, a close up look here. Uh, this is how it turned out. I painted it with acrylics first and then I just basically scribbled the colored pencils on there. So if, if you're an expert in using colored pencils. I should, probably should put out a trigger warning <laughs> because you're not going to like it. But I kind of think that he turned out pretty good. I, I like the way he looks. I, I'm sure that if I spent more time on it, it would come out better, but um, I'm really happy with him. So let me show you how I did it in case you want to do something like this uh, on a jackrabbit or anything else because I, I do think it was kind of fun. And if you do decide you wanted to make one of these guys, you can find it again at ultimatepapermache.com slash Jackrabbit. So let's go ahead and get started. I covered the Jackrabbit with strips of newspaper and paste. The original Jackrabbit was covered with paper mache clay and that would work really well for this one too. I just happened to use the paper strips this time. I used one layer and I let it dry. I gave my Jackrabbit two coats of white primer. Gesso might work better, I don't know because I don't have any, but I did have some latex primer left over from a project around the house and it does work. It's much easier to paint over white, whether it's the primer or the gesso, than it is to try to paint over that pattern newspaper. I mixed up some yellow ochre acrylic paint and then I darkened it slightly with burnt umber. I added a tiny amount of ultramarine blue to gray it down a little bit and then I put in quite a bit of white. I also added quite a lot of water because I wanted to thin it down a lot. I wanted a lot of the white to show through and I wanted some brush marks on there. I painted this over the entire head, but I did try to make the brush strokes in the same general direction as real rabbit's fur. I added even more water when I was putting it on the inside of his ears because I didn't want those to be very dark. I, want, I wanted a lot of the white still showing through. When that was dry, I mixed burnt umber and ultramarine blue to make a warm black. And then I mixed in a little bit of the original yellow color that I had used for the for the base color just to make it even warmer. And then I added white to that. And I, after thinning it with water, I kept an old rag handy <laughs> and washed it over the rabbit. I, what I was trying for was kind of a random variation over the entire rabbit. But I didn't put much gray on the inside of the ears. I, I really wanted that to stay light. It doesn't look great at this point but I've got a lot more work to do and in the end I, I actually really like it. I added some alizarin crimson to the original undercoat yellow for the eyes. Just a little bit and I put that over the eyes. I made a very very thin wash using alizarin crimson and burnt umber and a whole lot of water and I put this slightly pink wash over the inside of the ears and that ended up looking like this. 
I also added a tiny amount of water down just plain burnt umber to the eyes so that the yellow wouldn't be so bright. It was really transparent so the yellow does show through but it's not quite as glaring as it was before. I brushed a really light gray just white and black mixed together and no water at all. I put that over the front of his muzzle and the white ring around his eyes. The white ring around a jackrabbit's eyes have a really distinct pattern, so be sure to look at some photographs before painting your bunny. I also put a really thin line of that light gray around the edge of the ears, except for the very top, and I'm, I'm going to put a, a black stripe around the top of his ears later. When the light gray was dry, I just went back over it with pure white. I tried to show some brush marks just to give it a little bit of texture and interest. And then I did something that I really like doing for eyes just because I have a really hard time making pupils, two pupils <laughs> for two different eyes, the same size and put them in the right place. I, I just, I don't know why, I just have a hard time with that. So I cut some round pieces of black paper, tissue paper, and I stuck them onto the eyes with golden clear drying soft gel gloss. You have to work pretty fast before the gel dries, but if you are fast enough, you can move the tissue paper around and get it in exactly the place where you need it. You do need to use a thick layer of the gel though, and you really do have to work fast, like I said, because it, you don't want it to dry before you want it to, or your pupils are gonna be in the wrong place. You might actually want to just go ahead and paint the pupils on your eyes. Um, it, that does work for most people. It just doesn't work very well for me. So now after most of the uh, acrylic paint is all done, yeah, I, it was finally time for me to play around with my colored pencils. These are oil-based pencils and they don't smear or run when I added the varnish. So this does work. I, I don't know if any other kind of pencil would work because I, I really don't use them as a general rule. If you do try this idea, be sure to play around with it just on a piece of painted cardboard so you can see if you like it before you scribble on your rabbit like I did. And as I said before, I really don't think most people would use pencils over acrylic paint. They're really made for uncoated paper. So you're really not watching an expert <laughs> doing anything in this video. I'm really just playing around. I started out using four different pinks and a light orange and just kind of scribbled it randomly over the inside of the ears. That really brought the, the colors together and I liked it, although it was just a little bit too bright, so I did make some changes to it later. For the rest of the rabbit, I tried several colors to see which ones were going to show up on the darker yellow-gray. And it turns out that you can only see the darkest browns and black. And I did use some um, a fairly bright orange just uh, right under the eye. There's some wonderful YouTube videos showing how to paint fur with colored pencils. They're just amazing. You might want to watch some of those before trying this, but I don't know if their techniques would work over acrylic paint or not. You'd have to try it. I just scribbled. I, I wasn't even trying to come close to making it realistic. I did try to make my scribbles in the general direction of the fur though. I was hoping that a white pencil would uh, show up on the darker gray because there are some white spots under his, um, under his jawline, but that didn't work. It just didn't show up at all. So I, I just used some acrylic paint with a little bit of water added to it under that jawline. I used black acrylic paint and a small brush to add the black line around the eyes. When that was dry, I gave him some white reflection spots and I made some white fur marks around the front of his muzzle and on the jawline where I had put that white paint. I was using a brush that I bought a couple of years ago after watching the folks on the Studio Wildlife YouTube channel. They were using one just like it and um, their paintings are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> but I've never actually tried the brush until now. I've had it for quite a long time, but I, I was always kind of scared to use it. But this was kind of fun. I only, you know, put a couple of brush marks with it, but I, I really did like it and I'll try to play around with it a bit more. Now, I'm almost done, but the inside of the ears, they just feel a little bit too uh, busy. 
So I tried using a light wash uh, made with light gray, mixed with a lot of water, and then a little bit of yellow ochre just to warm it up, and I brushed that over the inside of the ears. And I do think that helped pull the colors together and it made it look, um, well, it just, it just looked better to me. And then I added the black lines around the top of the ears. So after I added two coats of fingernail polish to the eyes, like I said I was going to do, and a coat of ultra matte acrylic varnish over the rest of him, this is how he looks. So now it's all done, and I've got a hole in the back there so that I can hang him up on the wall back there somewhere. I'm maybe, maybe over here. <laughs> getting a little bit crowded. I'm really happy with the way he came out. It's uh, just nice, friendly, lovable jackrabbit. When I was putting all those lines on it, uh, I happened to notice there was movement over on the other side. There's a window over there and a rabbit was walking by, hopping. <laughs> Not this kind of rabbit though. This is a jackrabbit. We have, um, I think they're cottontails here but it was kind of cute. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect timing for him. So anyway, if you would like to make a jackrabbit, whether you paint him this crazy way or not, you can find the new pattern at ultimatepapermache.com slash jackrabbit. Go check it out, and I'll see you there.